Greetings, this will be a walkthrough of my Excel checkbook register spreadsheet, which is available as from my website noted in the description below. I originally made this available in 2019, and this latest version has enhancements that have been added over several years, so I felt it was time to do a complete walkthrough video as opposed to the separate piecemeal videos of the past. This latest version also has performance improvements in the formula for balance, and it no longer uses a function called XLOOKUP for categorizing entries, which was a problem for those who didn't have the newer version of Excel found in Office 365. I originally offered this Excel checkbook spreadsheet because other spreadsheets that I found online had problems if you tried to move register entries around with cut and paste, and using insert or delete to add or delete rows was also problematic ref errors would result in the balance column. I'll start with an overview of the entire spreadsheet and then we'll dive into some sample usage. This checkbook register spreadsheet features four sheets, four worksheets for up to four different bank accounts. Uh, currently they're just named register one, register two, register three, uh, et cetera. Uh, and you certainly can rename these to be more meaningful to you. Uh, they're not exclusive, exclusively for checking accounts. Certainly, you could also use it for uh, one or more savings accounts. Uh, but there are uh, four different worksheets for up to four different bank accounts. Uh, next, there's a sheet for tracking progress toward paying off your credit card debt uh, and or other loans that you might have. We'll take a look at that in further detail. And then there are corresponding dashboards with charts to go along with each of the four register worksheets, and we'll take a look at those as well. Finally, there's also a sheet for your categorization of entries. Totally an optional thing to do, but if you'd like to categorize your entries, uh, this is the sheet where you can fine tune uh, these category categories, uh, which then will also apply to the, the dashboards. So I'll start here in this first register and talk through the columns. So we have a, a column for the, the date, uh, a column for transaction type, which you can certainly delete if you uh, don't wanna use that. Some banks will uh, reflect the type of transaction. And if you download your bank transactions from the banking website, they might include that column. Uh, so it might be handy to, to retain it. Then we also have a column to record the check number if there was a check written. We have a column for the description, a column for the withdrawal, deposit, uh, the balance is automatically computed, and then we have a column that's called subcategory. This is a column where you would actually uh, choose an entry from a drop-down list, and then it will automatically populate the broader category and uh, an even broader uh, type uh, down here at the end. And then lastly, there, there's a separate memo column Again, totally optional. You'd be welcome to delete that column as well if you just don't want to see it. When you go to use the checkbook spreadsheet, you probably will want to personalize things. So for example, maybe checking account number one doesn't really make much sense. And, and maybe it's uh, uh, something called main checking would be more appropriate for you. When you go to make entries, we'll just go ahead and, and put in a few samples. For example, I'll manually put in an entry for uh, let's say uh, June 12th, and I don't have to necessarily put in the year. I can just hit the enter key or the tab key or the arrow key, and uh, it'll automatically assume that the current year. And we'll come over here, and let's say that I have a, a cell phone bill that I've already paid, so we'll put an entry in for that. Okay, after hitting enter or using an arrow key, uh, notice that the uh, updated balance is computed. And now we've got a optional subcategory. So here in the drop-down list, we have entries uh, that are probably the most popular, but you'll be able to revise these. But um, I will put in a uh, cell phone, and then notice that the broader category and type is automatically uh, calculated. Uh, we'll continue with one more sample entry in here. Uh, for example, maybe I had a um, Uber car ride somewhere and we'll put an entry in for that. Um, now, if you go to put in a, a subcategory that is not yet 
in the list. For example, I'll just type in Uber, try to hit enter. I'm going to get an error telling me that the value does not match the data validation restrictions. So I'm going to have to click on that cancel button there. And I'll either need to you know, pick um, an, an existing uh, subcategory from the list, or maybe I want to go ahead and personalize the categories uh, list. So I'll go, go to this worksheet entitled categories. We have some notes here to help you uh, with this category, category list. I'm going to come down to the bottom here and just start typing in the word Uber because that's what I'd like um, a new category to be. And I recommend that for your categories, only put categories that are fairly broad and that you'd like to see a separate slice on a pie chart for. Um, Uber might not be a broad enough category uh, for a lot of people, but uh, I think I will go ahead and, and put an entry in here just for, uh, for example, and I'm going to make this a, uh, under the same category as uh, transport, and it will be an expense uh, rather than an income. Um, and you, you may want to keep your list in alphabetical order so that when you click on the drop down, it's also in alphabetical order. So as long as my, uh, cursor or, or cell selection is within that column, we can go to the, uh, the sort uh, choice and there's a couple different places to find that sort, but I'll come to the sort button up here, tell it to sort A to Z, and that has now realphabetized the list. And if I come back to register one, click in my little drop down, I will see Uber as a new choice in my list and notice that again, it did automatically uh, fill in the category and, and type. Now, one of the reasons that I like to use Excel for managing my checkbook or savings account is for some budget forecasting or just being able to uh, get a sense of the future transactions that I know will be hitting me perhaps later in the month and what that impact might be to my bottom line. So, uh, for example, uh, I might put in some future entries and I'll skip a whole bunch of blank rows before I do that. So that um, I'm just going to anticipate, you know, ongoing regular transactions uh, in the month, but you know, toward later in the month, I just know that I'm going to have some transactions for the, my electric bill, uh, car insurance, uh, other credit card payments, for example. And I'll just go ahead and quickly, quickly put in some sample future entries that I am anticipating. Uh, as I just mentioned. So um, I'll put those in and it's letting me know that um, uh, without any other transactions occurring, you know, this, this will be my uh, bottom line toward later in the month. Uh, and of course I can just continue to put in ongoing transactions that, as they happen and or download them from my bank to copy paste in, into my Excel spreadsheet. So for example, perhaps I go to the grocery store and put a transaction in for there. And I'll look in my entry here to see if I have a, a subcategory for groceries. And there we go. Um, so as you continue to put in uh, more and more entries, maybe you find that you're bumping into your, your future entries that you put in there just for forecasting. So you, you can you know, do a couple different things. You can safely insert rows as needed. So for example, if my uh, cursor is, is here, I can go to the, the insert button and do insert rows to, to add more rows. Uh, but the other thing that you can safely do is highlight those entries. Notice that I'm not selecting the balance, but I am, I am selecting just the description and the withdrawal. And I could then do a cut and then either move them further down or move them further up. So I'll just uh, click up here and tell it that I want to do a paste. And uh, there they are. And the spreadsheet is not giving me any ref errors, which again, I mentioned earlier, the majority of, of Excel spreadsheets that I've seen online, uh, you'll get uh, ref errors if you try to do inserts or deletes of rows or cut and copy or paste uh, entries around. Uh, the spreadsheet has been set up that uh, the balance values will be hidden unless it sees something in the description column. Uh, so um, if you do, you know, cut and paste, uh, it might still show the previous balances, 
but again, uh, the balance only shows if you have a description. So for example, if I put in a, a, just a, a number here, 55, um, it's not going to show the balance unless I happen to put in uh, a description right here. Uh, and then it will show that, that balance amount. All right, well, let's move on to the dashboards. Uh, so I've got, of course, a number of entries that are that have been categorized. Um, now, for sake of the dashboarding, I'm actually going to just uh, temporarily delete those uh, future transactions. I'm going to go over to this dashboard number one, which corresponds to register number one. And uh, the dashboards have been set up using an Excel pivot table. And because of, ex of Excel's functionality of pivot tables, we do have to tell Excel to refresh the pivot table. Dashboard number one um, will make use of a pivot table worksheet that's, that's here at the very end. And right now it's just not been refreshed yet. So I offer two different versions of this sample checkbook register one with a macro and one without a macro. Um, there can be, you know, maybe security concerns around macros, downloading Excel spreadsheet with a macro. So that's why I wanted to offer one that didn't have a macro. I personally prefer the one that's got a macro because just with a, a simple uh, click of a button, it will refresh uh, the pivot tables, which then also, you know, refresh the dashboards. So as an example, I, if I click on this uh, refresh button, notice that it has just automatically refreshed the, uh, the pie chart with entries as well as the other uh, charts that are in here to give me an overview of total of deposits, withdrawals, expenses by month, uh, et cetera. And what, one of the features of the dashboards will be a slicer control. Uh, so the slicer control is there. If you just, for example, only wanted to see a specific month, you can just click on that one month and then it just shows that particular month. If I click on June, for example, uh, now it's only showing me June. And then you have some buttons up here to clear that filter. So it's back to just showing uh, everything. So all the dashboards for each worksheet, uh, each uh, register uh, will have that same, same functionality. Uh, the charts, uh, refresh data button. However, if you choose to use the non-macro version, then what you'll want to do uh, anytime you want to refresh the, the pie charts is, uh, you know, just, uh, will be, you know, find the worksheet that corresponds to the dashboard that you're inter interested in. So we have worksheet labeled pivot table one, pivot table two, et cetera. So when I go to pivot table one, um, and here is the, the, the main pivot table that corresponds with dashboard one, as long as my cell selection is somewhere in this pivot table, I can go to the menu choice for pivot table analyze, and there's a refresh button up here. And that's all the, the macro button does is, is it just runs this refresh button. Now I'll make a, another quick note that if you choose the macro version of the Excel spreadsheet in the uh, website that will offer the download, uh, I'll look for the note regarding the likely Microsoft security warning that you'll get anytime you download an Excel spreadsheet that has a macro, uh, Microsoft wisely warns you that, um, hey, this file could be, could be dangerous. And so you might have to uh, go into uh, Windows File Explorer and uh, uh, do an unblock because it's an Excel file that has a macro and the website page will go through the details of that. But again, yes, you certainly can just use the, the non-macro version as well. Well, let's talk about the worksheet for card debt, for just being able to track your progress toward paying off credit card debt or other loans that you might have. So in this worksheet, we have some, some bar graphs to correspond with uh, up to eight different credit cards and or personal loans uh, that somebody might have. So here's, here's the idea of how this might work. So let, let's say that I have another credit card that's for, uh, for Chase Bank. So I'll, I'll fill in Chase Bank here and I will make a note of the current balance for my Chase Bank credit card. Let's say that it's uh, uh, $2,245. And then uh, this cell for the initial debt is where I would populate what my maybe highest balance was. Um, or if, if I plan to no, no longer use that particular credit card, 
Um, and, uh, you know, again, I just want to track my progress toward paying it off. This is where I just put in, you know, that, that uh, either current amount or the, or the highest amount of, of debt that I've had on that card. So as soon as I put in that, you know, you'll see it populate uh, the corresponding uh, chart there. Uh, the idea for the date is that, yeah, perhaps once a month, once every other month, when you just want to track your progress, this is just where you can record, um, you know, what date you were um, updating the, the current balance for the, your, your credit card. So, for example, I'll put in June 15th, and maybe I know that I just made a recent payment, and so the, the balance has come down, and let's say maybe my, my balance is down, down to 1900 so that will reflect in a shrinking bar chart. And the, the, uh, the bar graph for your debt paid off uh, will just help you to track your total progress across all the credit cards. So with our goal of you know, reaching 100% of, uh, of all the debt uh, being paid off. Well, that's about it for now. Uh, please consider subscribing and liking if this was helpful. I'll also link to another video that demonstrates how I download transactions from my bank website uh, to then populate into my checkbook spreadsheet. Until next time, thank you for watching.